welcome to Raja TV. I'm Zunar Nazal for tonight's local news. Making the headlines this evening, Maldives confirms 125 new COVID-19 cases, 140 recoveries and an additional death. President Ibrahim Mohamed Zola is in Agafar Island of Kafirtal to join the official celebrations to mark the 41st National Fisherman's Day. And the People's Majlis consideration is to be sought for Maldives to accept the World Trade Organization WTO's protocol amending the agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights trips. We'll return after a short break. Stay tuned. Maldives has confirmed the sixth COVID-19 fatality of December. The Health Protection Agency, HPA, identified the deceased as an 82-year-old Maldivian man who was receiving treatment at Hulumala Medical Facility. He was pronounced dead by doctors at 2.23 p.m. Friday. Maldives' COVID-19 death toll has risen to 256, of which 206 have been reported during 2021. The latest victim has been reported a few days after the last fatality was reported, when a 79-year-old Maldivian man who was receiving treatment at the Addo COVID Management Facility was pronounced dead at 9.30 p.m. December 6. The island nation reported the highest number of deaths in a single month since the pandemic began during May 2021, when a total of 88 deaths are confirmed. 50 deaths are confirmed in June, while 10 deaths are reported in July. In August, five COVID-19 patients succumbed to the virus. September also saw five COVID-19 fatalities. Twelve COVID-19 fatalities were reported in October, followed by seven in November. Six COVID-19 fatalities have been reported so far in December. Maldives reported 125 new COVID-19 cases on Thursday, of which 93 were confirmed from residential islands. According to the latest figures publicized by the Health Protection Agency, HPA, the new cases are confirmed through 3,701 samples tested for the virus between 6 p.m. Wednesday and 6 p.m. Thursday. 23 out of the 125 new COVID-19 cases confirmed on Thursday were detected from Maldives' congested capital, Mala City. HPA also confirmed seven new cases from an operational resort. Maldives' COVID-19 case tally has risen to 92,754 with this development. In the reporting period, active cases dropped to 1,861 from the previous day's 1,876, with hospital admissions declining to 16 after three more patients were released from the hospital. With 140 additional recoveries reported on Thursday, the total number of recoveries confirmed nationwide has also risen to 90,625. Maldives reported its first COVID-19 fatality in April 2020, and since then, the death toll has risen to 256. The latest victim was identified as a Maldivian man, aged 82. Six COVID-19 fatalities have been reported so far in December. Maldives confirmed the first case of the new, more transmissible variant of COVID-19, Omicron, on the 5th of December. HPA highlighted that the first case of the new variant was confirmed through genome sequencing of a tourist that arrived in the Maldives from South Africa on the 21st of November. The Public Health Authority urged caution over the confirmation of Omicron in the Maldives, pushing the public to take the necessary precautions for their safety and for the safety of others, and to pay special heed to the instructions and guidelines set forth by the authorities. HPA stressed on the importance of adhering to safety measures to avoid another COVID-19 wave, from hitting the Maldives and urged the public to provide their full support and cooperation in helping authorities curb the spread of the infection. The Public Health Authority have urged the public to get their vaccination doses, adhere to guidelines set in place in hosting events and gatherings, and even in the work environment to prevent the risk of widespread infection. This comes at a time the government imposed a ban on travel from seven countries in Africa recently, triggered by the threats of Omicron. Travellers have been banned from South Africa, Namibia, Mozambique, Lesotho, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Eswatini, including those who visited these countries 14 days before arriving into the Maldives, as well as those who transited in these countries for more than 12 hours. Further, 
The announcement reads that those who have travelled to the Maldives after spending more than 14 days in these countries and over 12 hours in transit must observe a quarantine period of 14 days. These new measures have been implemented at a time President Ibrahim Mohamed Sola has also revealed that there have been surging concerns regarding the more transmissible variant. Research indicates that those who have recovered from COVID-19 are at a high risk of contracting the new variant, dubbed a variant of concern by the World Health Organization. The country has been in a state of public health emergency for over a year since March 2020. It was extended a 21st time to expire on the 30th of December. 365,177 persons have completed both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. According to the latest figures publicized by the Health Protection Agency HPA, 1,095 more persons were inoculated under the government's COVID-19 default inoculation drive on Wednesday. As such, a 437 Greater Mala residents and 658 at all residents received vaccination shots. Wednesday's vaccinations included 41st doses administered to 26 Greater Mala residents and 14 at all residents. 102 Greater Mala residents and 29 at all residents received a total of 131 second doses. Further, 924 booster doses were administered to 309 Capital Region residents and 615 persons residing in outlying atolls. HPA revealed that a total of 18,124 persons have received booster doses so far. With this development, a total of 365,177 persons have completed both doses of the vaccine, whereas 396,106 persons have received first doses nationwide so far. The total number of persons awaiting second doses of the COVID-19 vaccination nationwide has dropped further to 30,929. There are currently three mobile teams across six vaccination centres in the capital region, as well as 176 vaccination centres spanning out Thang Atolls. According to HPA, ADK Hospital and Hormala Hospital, as well as Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital, will be open for those who wish to receive booster shots against COVID-19 from Saturday to Thursday. Booster doses will be given to those who have passed six months since completing second doses of the vaccine and meet the announced eligibility criteria. Further, those above 50 years of age will be eligible for the booster doses from the 20th of November onwards. ADK Hospital will be administering Pfizer doses from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. from Saturday to Thursday. Holmala Hospital will be open from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. through Saturday to Thursday and IGMH will be administering Pfizer doses from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Booster doses may only be administered on an appointment-only basis at these hospitals. For now, HPA is only administering Pfizer's booster doses. In addition to the booster shots, HPA revealed that Damana Vishi will be administering AstraZeneca doses from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on appointment basis only. Other vaccination centers administering AstraZeneca include Holmala Hospital from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., IGMH from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on appointment-only basis every Saturdays, Sundays and Mondays, and Vilimala Center from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Tuesday with appointments by the hospital. Sinopharm doses will be administered at Senahia from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The government earlier announced the decision to administer booster shots of the COVID-19 vaccination to immunocompromised persons, seniors and frontline workers. The decision to administer booster shots to frontliners and those at high risk of complications of COVID-19 who have received both doses of COVID-19 vaccination comes following recommendations from the Maldives Technical Advisory Group on Immunization. The decision backs the findings of extensive research by relevant authorities as well. Those who will be eligible to receive booster shots include individuals who have undergone an organ transplant, those on immunosuppressant drugs, long-term steroids, as well as patients undergoing dialysis. Further, cancer patients and those who had finished their treatment less than a year ago, those who are overweight, those taking oxygen therapy at home, patients of pulmonary diseases, liver diseases, diabetes and even those who are bedridden due to illness are eligible for the booster shots. The incumbent administration of President Ibrahim Mohamed Sole launched the COVID-19 default inoculation drive on the 1st of February. Authorities continue to urge the public to receive their vaccination shots in order to help curb complications from the virus. President Sole is in Galfaru Island of Kafir Tol to join the official celebrations to mark the 41st National Fisherman's Day. 
the president departed to the island on Friday afternoon and is joined by Vice President Faisal Nassim for the festivities. The newly developed ice plant on the island was inaugurated by the president during the visit. He also toured the Fisheries Expo organized by the Ministry of Fisheries, Marine Resources and Agriculture and will attend the official event held to mark the 41st National Fisherman's Day. VP Nassim unveiled a monument built on the island during the trip as well. Further, the President and Vice President will visit the police station in the island and engage in discussions with Gafar councillors and officials from the Women's Development Committee. President Sola will conclude his brief visit and return to the capital on Saturday. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund plays a pivotal role to help raise healthy, educated and empowered young adults across the globe, including Maldives, says First Lady Fazna Ahmed. The Maldivian First Lady said this in a video message delivered at the virtual Reimagining Opportunities for Children in South Asia event held in Kathmandu, Nepal, as part of the celebrations to mark the 75th anniversary of the agency, organized by the UNICEF Regional Office in South Asia, the high-level event saw governments across the region delivering video messages, including the Maldivian First Lady, as the UNICEF champion for the rights of children and young people in the Maldives. In her video message, the First Lady revealed that UNICEF has made invaluable impact that has been felt by children all over the world over its long 75 years of passionate work. Shedding light on the timely, important and necessary work that UNICEF continues to do, in turn improving the well-being of millions of children every year, Fazna revealed that the agency is paramount to help raise empowered young adults. Over its long 75 years of passionate work, UNICEF has made invaluable impact that has been felt by children all over the world. I cannot emphasize enough the timely, important and necessary work that UNICEF continues to do that improves the well-being of millions of children every year. UNICEF plays a pivotal role to help raise healthy, educated and empowered young adults across the globe, including Maldives. UNICEF first started working in the Maldives about 43 years ago and since then, the First Lady revealed that close to 100% of Maldivian children are enrolled in primary education, with mortality rate having decreased to 7.6 per thousand births in 2019. She went on to highlight that President Ibrahim Mohamed Sola ratified the All-Important Child Rights Protection Act and the Juvenile Justice Act during his first year in office in 2019. These acts mandated a safe platform for children to voice and participate in making decisions that affect them for the first time in the country's history, the First Lady added. Further speaking, Fazna noted that the laws also prohibited the death penalty of juvenile and prohibited child labor and child marriage in the Maldives, going on to shed light on the Education Act that followed in 2020. The Act recognizes the importance of inclusive education, she said, noting that these laws are important milestones to ensure that every child is protected and that every child has an equal chance to thrive into adulthood. Compared to when UNICEF first started work in Maldives about 43 years ago, today close to 100% of our children are enrolled in primary education. Mortality rate has decreased to 7.6 per thousand births in 2019. In 2019, President Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh ratified the all-important Child Rights Protection Act and the Juvenile Justice Act. For the first time ever, these acts mandated a safe platform for children to voice and participate in making decisions that affect them. The laws also prohibited the death penalty of juvenile and prohibited child labor and child marriage in the Maldives, while the Education Act that followed in 2020 recognizes the importance of inclusive education. 
These laws are important milestones to ensure that every child is protected and that every child has an equal chance to thrive into adulthood. In her message, the Maldivian First Lady highlighted that it goes without saying that the children and grandchildren will truly live the consequences of the globe's action or inaction with which the globe must engage in collaborative efforts to ensure that their voices are heard and represented in the response to climate action and other issues that directly affect them. Concluding her remarks, the Maldivian First Lady extended her warmest wishes in commemoration of the agency's 75th anniversary. Majuli's consideration is to be sought for Maldives to accept the WTO protocol amending the agreement on trips. President Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh reached the decision following the discussions held with his cabinet of ministers on the 7th of December. The agreement establishes a minimum level of protection that WTO members are required to provide for the intellectual property of other members. Further, the protocol amending the TRIPS agreement is the first amendment to the agreement that highlights options open for developing and least developed countries to address public health needs which has also been termed flexibilities. With the amendment, a decision on patients and public health is to be made permanent and it also allows countries that cannot produce generic drugs to acquire medicines from third country producers under compulsory licensing arrangements. The amendment also allows exporting countries to grant compulsory licenses to generic suppliers exclusively for the manufacturing and exporting of essential medicines to countries that do not have the capacity to manufacture. News and sports coming up next. Maldives has lost to Sri Lanka in the first friendly match played in preparation for the Central Zone Volleyball Tournament to be hosted in Bangladesh later this month. The friendly game between the national volleyball teams of Maldives and Sri Lanka was held at the Maldives Centre for Social Education on Thursday. The Sri Lankan team won the game three sets to one. President Ibrahim Mohamed Sola attended the match and unveiled the official jersey set of the Maldives team. During the first set of the friendly game held in preparation for the Bangabandhu Asian Central Zone Men's and Women's Volleyball Challenge Cup 2021, Maldives failed to show a competitive game and even missed multiple services. Sri Lanka led the set 25 to 13. Both teams showed equally competitive performance in the second set. However, the set ended with Sri Lanka acquiring an easy win with a 25 to 14 score. The third set commenced with Sri Lanka in the lead and ended with the 18 to 25 score. Maldives is scheduled to play three friendly matches against Sri Lanka in the preparations. The second match will be held on Friday night. The third match will commence on Sunday. Looking at the weather for tonight and tomorrow, scattered showers with a few heavy showers and thunderstorms are expected over the country. Winds will be north to northeasterly at 8 to 18 miles per hour in central littles and 5 to 15 miles per hour elsewhere. Winds may gust 35 miles per hour during showers. Seas will be moderate becoming rough during showers in central littles and slight becoming moderate during showers elsewhere with a wave height of 2 to 5 feet. All are advised to be cautious as heavy rain is expected. Looking through the main headlines before we conclude for the night, Maldives confirms 125 new COVID-19 cases, 140 recoveries and an additional death. President Sola is in Gafar to join the official celebrations to mark the 41st National Fisherman's Day and Majali's consideration is to be sought for Maldives to accept the WTO protocol amending the agreement on trips. That's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Zonana Zalif with the local news. Have a pleasant evening and stay tuned.